Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about class design and using a new keyword that was introduced in modern C++11 known as mutable. Now, mutable allows us to take a little bit more control over our classes and it gives us ability to play with const data. Now, I'll go ahead and talk about why we might want to do that with an example by looking at CPP reference, but let's just go ahead and look at a simple example here to learn a little bit about mutable. So what I've got here is a simple class here called point 3f. It's just a point class that takes an x, y, and a z position, something you might use in computer graphics for rendering, for instance. So we've got our x, our y, and our z value. And if you know a little bit about computer graphics, you'll know we also have this w value that's used for 3D perspective and these types of things. So just take my word for it that we're just going to set it to 1.0f in the C++ series here. And if you want to learn a little bit more about that, follow my graphics series on one of the other playlists. Now, with that said, let's just go ahead and compile this program here. And I'll go ahead and run it. And we can go ahead and see that we're printing out the member variables x, y, z, and w appropriately here. All right, now what I'm going to go ahead and remind you of is this idea of const correctness and this keyword for const. Now, if we use const after a member function, that means we can't change anything. So for instance, let's just go ahead and try to at line 11, change uh, w here to the argument here that we're passing in new w. And I'll go ahead and recompile this and we're going to get an error here, right? So const correctness in general is a good thing. It doesn't let us change variables. Now, of course, we've learned about some of the other uses, such as having a actual type that's const that we can't change that we might use in an argument, for instance, or when we create uh, local variables, for instance, like const uh, some value here, for instance, that once assigned can't change. All right, so those are some of the uses of const, but sometimes we want the enforcement of const, like in this uh, particular example, but we might want to be able to change some values here. So for instance, what if I do actually want to change w here, even though I'm saying const here, because maybe I'm doing some other operations here. So for instance, I want to be able to just print out x, y, and z, or do some operation. Now, I'll give you something a little bit more realistic in a moment, but let's just say that I want to override this const here. So what I can actually do is, within this struct here, is I can use the word or the qualifier mutable here. Now, I'll go ahead and try to compile this program, and now it actually compiles, and we can actually see that w has been changed to 5 here. Now, how does this exactly work here? Well, again, this function called change w, well, it allows me to change this variable because it's been marked as mutable. And that again overrides const. Now let's go ahead and see if I've just put in x here and try to change it to some other value here. Const will still protect us against x because, well, const says you can't change any of the member variables unless they're marked explicitly with mutable. Okay, now at this point, you're probably saying, why in the world would I want to do this? What would the point be of using const now that I've got this other easy way to sort of override this thing that gave us protection? Well, let's go ahead and look at an example. And I think CPP reference, one of our favorite sites, has a good example here that I can go ahead and show. So in this particular example with mutable here, they're using it for this thing called thread safe counter. And what they've got here is a mutex, and they've marked it as mutable. So that might be something, for instance, if you have getter functions, for instance, where you would want to just return data, regular member variables, but you want to make sure that this is done in a very safe way. So what you can do is use a scope uh, lock, like lock guard here, and the mutex is actually going to change state. So you have something here that is protecting your variables. And again, you can watch my C++ series on uh, concurrency, and this might be an example that I add because it's just really eloquent here. But again, it allows us to change this mutex, something that should be changing in this instance here, even though it's in a getter function that's marked as const, because we want to be able to, in a thread safe way, retrieve this data. Okay, so I know this is a little bit of a maybe more advanced example if you haven't seen threads yet, but I would say this would be an example of something that we can make sense about where we might want to say, okay, it makes sense to make sure that none of the data members are changing, but when we want to do things in a thread safe way where we have multiple threads possibly changing the same value at the same time or retrieving it, then we want to make sure that we 
um, lock that. And in order to change the state of this actual lock, it needs to be marked as mutable. Now you go ahead and see in the comment, it has here this M&M &M rule that says mutable and mutex go together. I suspect this is one of the reasons why, or one of the motivations for having the mutable keyword in the first place, as well as that's needed and sort of supported in some other contexts as well. So with that said, this is just going to be a short video on mutable, and you can go ahead and think of it as the M and M rule as a use case for where you might want to use this. And maybe this will also have some other uh, ideas for where you might want to use this in your actual code. So with that said, folks, I hope this was a useful video, continuing our discussion on class design and some different things that we can do. And we can really see that C++ gives us a lot of control here. So with that said, thank you for your time and attention. Make sure that you like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and ask some comments uh, below or ask some questions rather in the comment section below if you have any questions. And with that said, we'll see you in the next one, folks.